my color garage. We're going to change the crank sensor on this 2007 Cadillac EXT. We got it up here on these max jacks, but you can get this from a regular floor jack and a couple of jack stands to get up underneath it. And so we're going to go through the steps on how to change this. So let's get started. Okay, so we have to pull the starter on this thing, and the first thing you got to do is disconnect the negative battery cable. So whenever you disconnect the battery, you want to make sure that you always start with the negative side first, because that way you don't get any arcing or sparking when you disconnect it. So this takes a 10 millimeter nut right on top of it, and you can use a socket and ratchet or a regular 10 millimeter wrench. So th these aren't the easiest to get into, as you can see. So take that, make sure that's down out of the way. And now, from this point, you'd want to jack up the car and put the jack stands underneath it. Once you get the car jacked up, you got to get these two 13 millimeter bolts. There's one here and there's one on the other side. And that pops off the starter. Okay, once you got the two bolts out, we're going to take the starter and we're going to slide it back out of the way. And this isn't the easiest thing to do. You're going to have stuff falling on, you know, like you can see right now. And you got to get the wires up out of the way to slide it back far enough to get it out. Hopefully it'll cooperate and we can get it out. You can also reach through the inner fender well and around and grab the top of the starter and use that for leverage to help you get it out. For some reason, this thing is not wanting to come out. Now, I didn't disconnect any of the wires on the starter because I just want to drop it down out of the way. After messing around with the starter, it won't come out. So we're going to take off the little holder plastic shielding around it. It's got a little plastic shield around it. So we're going to pop that off and see if that makes it. Oh yeah. Now the starter's out of our way a little bit. Get this little shield up out of here. So now that we got the starter down out of the way, there's the crank sensor right back in there. So this is actually inside the fender well. So here's the inner fender right up here. I'll get back this out. There's the inner fender well and so you're going to want to turn the tire all the way. So you're going to want to turn the wheel all the way to the driver's side and you're going to get down in through here. And you're going to go through the inner fender well and get down to that crank sensor right inside there. And uh, we're going to take the connector off first and then pull out the sensor. Okay, this is going to be really hard to see, but I'm going to take my arm up through the inner fender well right over here and reach across and going to go right in to where the crank sensor is. Take my finger and pop the connector off. The connector comes off real easy. You're just going to want to take your finger right on the edge of the connector, pull the lip up a little bit and slide it right off. Comes off really easy. See, so now we got the connector off and we're going to get a long extension in a 10 millimeter and go through, take that off and then pull the crank sensor out. As you can see, I've used a bunch of extensions. You can use uh, a small extension or a regular ratchet and reach through there and do it by hand. 
but I like to get away from my work, so I just have a long extension. You get right up inside there. It comes off. Now when you take the crank sensors out, you're gonna go through with your hand right here. You wanna twist them before you pull them out. Because sometimes they'll break. So we'll twist it back and forth, and then we'll pull on it, and then it comes out. Now when you put the new crank sensor in, you're going to want to take some oil or uh, O-ring lube and put it in there and put it on the O-ring itself and just wipe it around. That makes it easier to go in and then you don't cut the O-ring when you put it in. See, went in that quick. Take the nut and the bolt. That started. Put the connector back on. Now we gotta put the starter cover back on. So. We gotta push the starter back into position. And you're gonna wanna reach through the inner fender well again. Pull the starter back. See, now we got a little bit of clearance in the starter. Now we're gonna take this and slide it around the, on the starter, slide the starter into position. And then we're gonna get the bolt that goes in the side bracket. Or I mean, not the side bracket, that goes in the plastic housing. Get that started. I go through the inner fender well again and position the starter and uh, Get this bolt up through. Sometimes these can be a real bear to get started, which, ah, oh, that hit the camera. That's awesome. This one happens to be a real, a real bear today. Now we'll tighten up these bolts. So this one with the plastic's a little tight and with my impact socket, I couldn't get on it. So I had to get a chrome one. Okay, now we're gonna reach down and find a negative battery cable, which that can be difficult. You gotta use both hands sometimes to 
get back in there and you hear it snappy snap a little bit we got that on take our 10 millimeter slide it underneath here now make sure you always do the negative battery cable right on fired right up like it should so we took it for a test drive the crank sensor is working good and everything on this crank sensor to change it it's the same for all the 5.3s 4.8s and 6 liters and 6.2 liters that General Motors has put out since 2000 all the way up until the present the 8.1 liters they have a different crank sensor on them 